Let's see if this is working. I think I should be live by now. Oh, I am live. Look at this. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Look at this. Rob Akers, Dieter Burkhart. Look at this. This is all going really swimmingly, it looks like. I'm going to just tune that music down so you can hear me as well. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. As always, uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, you being a part of this daily live stream that we do every single day at the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Uh, my name is Matt Bailey, if that's not obvious enough by who's broadcasting this onto the onto the group, onto the page, and onto YouTube. So we're live to both uh, or to both Facebook page and group. We encourage you to be a part of the group, however, because uh, that's where the action is. That's where the comments are. That's where people are joining in right now. Um, <laughs> uh, the Daily Bailey Whiskey Wall. <laughs> Daily Bailey Whiskey Wall, yes. There's some whiskey behind me. There's some in front of me. There's some to the left. There's some to the right. Uh, there's whiskey all through this office. That's kind of how it goes. Uh, Adam Pinkard, good to see you. Rob Akers, good to see you. Cam Gilkerson, good to see you. Joey Santon, Steve Oates, owner, good one. Good to see you all. Greg Donovan, been a while, mate, Greg. Hope you're well. Hope you're in, in, in good spirits and keeping isolated and all that. It's hard in your role. Uh, Kirsten, Laurie, Kirsten, good to see you. Um, Kirsten, uh, I'm going to announce it here first. You will be a special guest on this show. I promise you that. I do actually have a special guest, unplanned completely, Who's joined the um, as a participant in the uh, in the chat uh, with me right now? I'll, I'll 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 bump him in in just a moment. But just a few little housekeeping things. You can I, I'm taking calls live at, during this session, like I've done before. So this is a Q and A. There's a chance for some awesome questions to come in. You can uh, you can yes, Inoka, you can request um, you can request songs. People requested. I actually got two song requests during my cocktail hour one, where I made a mess of some cocktails. That was good fun. So you're welcome to make song requests. I don't know how well I can fulfill them. So best of luck there. Uh, good to see you, Greg. Yeah, all good, mate. Um, so yes, I have a special guest in, in waiting um, uh, just on the sidelines here. And uh, But I am taking live calls. If you call, I might take your call, depending on how many calls are coming in. And B, uh, just remember, you're going live with me on that call. So, you know. It's Friday night. Let's all behave ourselves. But it's, um, you know, it's uh, Joey says he's finally going to ask his cask maturation questions tonight. Oh, I'll see how I go with those, Joey. Um, there's some people out there who know a lot more about cask maturation than I do, but I try to study this stuff as much as I possibly can. That's why I love the book chat like I had with Murray last night. If you haven't had a chance to watch the Murray uh, stream that we did last night, um, Murray Hassan went live with me last night talking about new whiskey literature that he, uh, that he, has been reading, discovering it was about armchair travel, as he called it. Really good word for it because we can't really travel at the moment. So this is armchair travel is a good way of looking at it. Um, Rob Aker says, trumpet rendition of Tom Waits' Misery in the River of the World. <laughs> oh, mate. Yeah, it, tugging at my heartstrings. Big Tom Waits fan. Love it. But you know what? I'm a Tom Waits fan um, uh, of his modern stuff. Uh, and I know that's probably, I'm probably the demographic for it. Whereas, you know, people like, my, my dad's generation are more fans of sort of Blue Valentines and Swordfish Trombones kind of era. Uh, but I love the modern stuff. I think Mule Variations is, a, is an, a modern classic of an album. There you go. That's not that modern. 1999, I think that came out. Uh, great, great year for music, that one. Was, exactly. Um, uh, <laughs> Jason Davies, Sam Licardi, everyone tuning in. This is great. Now, Joey's got a few questions and he's answered... He's, he <laughs> He's posted some massive questions here in the thread. So I'm going to get to those right now. But before I do, I need a dram. I'm going to start with Champagne and Roses 80.10. I think you've seen this on the stream before, 80.10. Very cool because, A, we don't see too many light and delicate casks, and it's a good way to start off if you're dramming. Something not too heavy, something nice and light and fragrant. Champagne and Roses gives you an idea of the kind of flavor profile. It's like all fizzy champagne and rose petal kind of notes. And... Third reason I think this is cool is because it's dot 10. We've seen 10 casks in 37 years from this distillery. Very cool. Ah, sound test, sound test. There we go. Now, just remember, I'm taking calls live on the phone, but I'm going to get to Joey's questions first. I'm just going to pour a small one of that. I've got my little water jug over here as well. Okay. Joey asks, I have a few questions about the maturation of casks at SNWS as you've been talking a fair bit about their wood management program, and I hope this follows on from that. Okay. Here we go. 
Uh, in which regions of Scotland are the SNWS warehouses situated and does that make a bigger than normal difference to the whiskey than if it came out of the distillery itself? Uh, is that difference clearly discernible to you when you try them against spirit from the distillery itself? And do, have you got any examples? Great question. And I'm going to straight off the bat, preface that answer, preface the answer by saying, uh, first of all, you have to, um, you'd have to sort of have a discernible answer as to how much influence where that cask is maturing has on the finished product of a whiskey. Now, let me use an example of Kalila as a distillery. Great distillery, Isla Powerhouse Distillery. The They call it Mr. C over there. And that doesn't stand for Kalila. That stands for Mr. Consistent. Uh, it's have, have you ever had a truly bad Kalila? I know I haven't. Maybe one. But, you know, it's like it's very hard to get bad Kalila. So uh, a very consistently good distillery. Um, so uh, not a single cask of Kalila, maturing Kalila, is matured at Kalila. None of it. It's all shipped to the, uh, to the Highlands. Highlands? I think it's to the Highlands. It's shipped to the Highlands in a warehousing just situated there. It's cheaper to have warehousing where there's more space, obviously. They've obviously got an arrangement there with Diageo to store their casks there. It still tastes like Kalila to me. It doesn't matter that it's maturing in the Highlands. It's literally filled into casks and then shipped. Or in Kalila's case, I might be wrong on this, but no, it is. I think it's, oh, I don't think it's tankers. It might be tankers that come of of, of their new make spirit and then it's uh, casting happens elsewhere. I can't remember with Kalila exactly. I'm very sorry, but that's one very specific example. But uh, our warehouse, uh, our main warehouse for the SMWS is located just outside of Glasgow. So uh, does that mean that, that the influence of where it sits, it's sitting in Scotland, of course, it's sitting in Glasgow. Uh, but is that, uh, how much of that influence will make a change to the, um, to the spirit? How do I compare that to something though, Joey? That's the main question here. How do I compare that to a um, to something that has been, let's say, let's use Kalila as an example, distilled in Isla, maturing in the Highlands, and our warehouse is in Glasgow. So is is our is our cask more Kalila than theirs? Or do you know what I mean? This it's we're also comparing single casks here to to what? It's impossible to do comparison on that level because it's always going to be a different spirit. It's always going to be different maturation. It's always going to be a different cask and the profile is going to change that entirely. Hope that answers your first question. Uh, second question from Joey here in the, on the text, in, in, the, in the text chat. Uh, how often are the casks sampled and are some of the casks sampled more than others? Uh, do the tasting panel get to try casks at different stages of their maturation or only when Ewan says it is ready for them? I imagine if there are thousands of casks quietly maturing, it's a tough job to go through them on a routine basis. Joey, we, we generally don't bottle much, if anything, uh, really under seven years of age. Let's just put it that way. You don't really see many society casks that are younger than seven years. Uh, it's, it's, probably, it's probably reasonable to expect that most seven or eight-year-old casks are bottling. Um, most of them are first fill, maybe second fill, but rarely. Um, uh, if it's a young second fill, then it's probably quite a magical spirit and performing quite well. The uh, frequency of when they sample them... Um, is something I'm going to have to come back to you on. I'm pretty sure Ewan touched on this in my interview with him, but I'll have to get back to you on that one. It's a really good point. Um, uh, number three, uh, SMWS bourbons matured in Scotland. I doubt it, but they would have to be bottled in Scotland. I'll come back to that question. We've got a live call coming in. Hold on a second. Hello, it's Matt Bailey here. You're live on air. Who's speaking? Hi, Max. Um, I'm a Scorpio. My lucky number is 27, and I was just wondering whether you can tell me whether I'll come into any money soon um, and whether <laughs> I'll discover love. <laughs> yes, yes, you probably will, because I'm also a Scorpio, so you will discover money, love, and all the whiskey you could possibly ask for. Who's, who's speaking? What, what numbers should I put on the lotto? Uh, 26, 14, 7, 1, 18, and 3. Thank you. I'm just having trouble with my TV as well. Do you know how to get the digital channels? <laughs> I don't. I'm sorry. Okay. Say hi to Belinda for me. Uh, if I knew any Belindas, I would say hi. Best of luck. I don't know who that was, but that was a cool. That was an interesting call. I hope he wins the lotto. I knew I was going to get. I knew I was going to get an interesting call through. Um. So uh, SMWS Bourbons. Matured in Scotland. I doubt it, but they would have to be bottled in Scotland, right? No, 
and no again. So yes and no, sorry, uh, Joey. Uh, the SMWS bourbons are matured in um, in America. They have to be. So they they are matured there. They are fully matured in the USA. Uh, I won't say Kentucky or Tennessee, obviously, because they're matured in different states and different things. Um, uh, but yes, the, in some cases, they have been bottled elsewhere, but they have been, for moving forward, they're going to be bottled in the US as well and distributed from there to other branches, which is exciting. Uh, and last point from Joe Eager, it's a long one. Uh, Morsley raised a good point about, the, about refills being the unsung heroes of the whiskey industry. Very good point. Is there a specific type of wood that the SMWS would prefer to mature a whiskey in, or is it simply on a per cut? per cask or per, per spirit basis. Much like the rest of the industry, Joey, the SMWS prefers to mature in ex-bourbon. It's consistent, it's available, it's affordable, and it works for great maturation of spirit. That gives opportunities as well for finishing and extra maturation, but generally speaking, um, no. Yes, I mean, yes, sorry. The refills are the unsung heroes of the whiskey world though. That point is completely correct. Uh, they provide the backbone for blended whiskeys. They provide the backbone for single malt whiskeys. Uh, there are some distilleries that mature exclusively in refill. Uh, there are some maturities that distilleries that do both first fill refill, um, but refill generally like lots of refill bourbon barrels, of course, out there. Wow. Cool. I'm going to, hopefully that answers a few of your questions. Um, Tarawa, yeah, there you go. One of the best whiskeys I've ever had with a society color, Mark Garraway. I completely understand where you're coming from there. Uh, <laughs> Dito, yeah, you said it, mate. Um, I'm a Scorpio T, says Joey. Uh, yeah, cool, mate. You know what? Scorpio's uh, forever and um, forever and ever, guys. Uh, I'm just going to grab, make sure everything's here. I'm going to bring in our special guest. Oh, I have got another call coming in, however. Before I do that, I'm going to bring him in, but here we go. And Mr. Akers, you're live on air. Hello, Matt. How are we doing tonight? Happy Fridays to you, mate. Happy Friday to you. I've just got a wee dram of the uh, of the big swell going here and thought I'd uh, ask a little bit about uh, society history. Go for it. I'll see what I can do. So was, when I was reading Pip's book, The Founder's Tale, he, he talks about establishing the first uh, tasting panel and, and the, the history of getting the first casks in. But what I wanted to know was whereabouts in the, the history of the bottlings do we actually start seeing panel approved brands is it 1.1 or is it later on down the line sorry what was the, qu the question is when did we start seeing the panel the panel approval of of uh of casks so it seems like at the start it's like oh great we've got this cask of just of uh, distillery one or no no well, i mean cask of distillery two. the panel i mean the panel in its most formative way kind of started with dot one dot one uh because it was the syndicate it was pip's friends who all said oh well it has to be good enough. Like we can't just say we're committing X, X hundred pounds uh, each of them to uh, to buying that stock. It had to be good enough for them to buy and bottle. So it meant it was something that they would then pick up and um, and then bottle them for themselves and say, well, all 10 members of the syndicate are happy with that. Yes, I'll admit. So they were, they were able to try the spirit before they purchased the cask in that case. That's right. Yeah. Well, I mean, the cask was purchased sort of blind, but the, it's uh, each member of the syndicate wanted to make sure that they were happy with it. It's not that there was much they could have done. Maybe, maybe they could have sold it off or something if they didn't like it again. But um, put it in the flagon jars. And <laughs> well, yeah, it was put into glass flagons and, and 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 given to the syndicate. You know, the best part about that for me is just that it was a very informal way of doing it. But uh, as as we've grown as a club, the formalization of the tasting panel and still at the secrets that it keeps, which I, I'm quite respectful of. Um, and I'll be completely honest. I, there's so much about the panel I don't know, and that no, like they, they won't reveal it all. Uh, it's it's part of the they. We're not supposed to know who's on it. Uh, we don't know what they're sampling. Um, I'll be completely upfront with you. I sent some um, Australian samples uh, a while back uh, to the panel, and they won't say when they're sampling it, who's sampling it, who's on the panel for that, anything like that. Because there's always the opportunity then to influence and or anything like that, and that's not really what we're about. It's about you know keeping that part of it. Uh, opaque so that the rest of it can be transparent. Excellent. So there's been, there's been an the evolution of the panel, I guess, in that respect. It's, it started off with some friends who wanted to bottle a whiskey and they did, and they all got about a, a gallon each at the beginning. And then of course um, it's evolved into something much more scientific. And by scientific, I mean the, the SMWS is a member of the SWRI, which is the Scotch Whiskey Research Institute and the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy. 
So the process and protocols going forward of finding flaws and training up tasters and everything is so much better now than it ever has been. So then what's the role of uh, local, or is that to produce local tasting notes or is that a part of uh, selection for our outturn? Oh, like the local tasting panel. Indeed. Which doesn't really exist anymore as it used to. The, the local tester panel worked in a way when allocations worked much differently. That's something I'll have to get Andrew to touch on a lot more because he was he was the local tasting panel and he ran that with the local guests, which were the, the, eight, the eight people you saw in the program from the Vaults Dinner. Uh, the original mm. tasting panel in Australia that we only ever do local tasting panel now for when we're taking in an entire cask. So if we're, if we're taking yeah, right. an entire cask, like the um, triple berry lamington cake or the, um, uh, and yeah, if we're, yeah. if we're committing to a whole special cask, we want to make sure that yes, the UK panel have gone, this is of society standard and the Australian panel have gone, this is something that we know our members will like. So, so you're, you're tasting for local palate then. Yeah, we're tasting for local palate and and suitability because I mean something like that sixty eight dot one eight is probably the most um, luscious, rich kind of whiskey that we know our members will love. If that was perhaps maybe a just a refill bourbon seven or eight year old, it might not have been as popular. I'm not really sure, but it might have been something that is just a bit different. But this one in this case, well, in that specific example, it was Brook and Jules and the team at Whiskey and Almond. Big shout out to them, by the way. Uh, for being a part of that and selecting that cask. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Matt. And right, big mate. thumbs up to Joey for the most prepared question I've ever seen on one of these things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't do things by halves. That was great, Joey. Big, big shout out, mate. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rob. I'll speak to you soon. Thank you. See you soon, hopefully. Take, take care, mate. Yeah, indeed. And what, what better way to have a Friday night and take some questions as we're going in here? I'm going to let Matt Wooler into the room. He's asked to join the room. So why not? It's Friday night. Let's have a bit of fun. See if he's there. See if what's he doing? Oh, he may have bumped out on me there. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll catch up with him. Um, oh, no. There he is. There he is. <laughs> he's, getting his, he's getting his audio sorted there. Okay. I'm going to take some questions whilst he's sorting out his audio because your current the audio doesn't seem to be registering. Hey. Oh, there he is. There he is. Good to see you, mate. God. Lucky. I was grabbing a beer. <laughs> uh, okay. Pop source. Uh, Steve Oates replies with Kalila is tanked off on Isla. Yeah, tanked off on Isla. I, I saw behind, I sat behind a tanker on the ferry once from Port Escape tanker code 3065. If you need to know, uh, how did the tanker smell, Steve? That's what I'm really interested in. Uh, Zero Pardos says, Hi, Matt. The chat the other day with Balvenia was very interesting. Could you explain again why they don't do bottlings for the society? It sounded like there's definitely a story there. There definitely is a story. I don't have the full details of it, but I will tell you now. Um, Zero, the, the answer there really was that uh, William Grant and Sons for a long time did sell to independent bottlers, including the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, uh, and they don't at all now. So the reason for that was, from what I've been told, and I'm not going to name names, but there was an independent bottler that was operating out of Europe and they took a bulk amount of, I think it was Balvenie at the time, uh, as independent spirit, and instead of what, doing what they said they'd do with it, which was uh, package it as a premium independent release, they packaged it and sold it all to a supermarket. So it became sort of like a cheap supermarket release that was then sort of competing with them. And William Grant and Sons are very protective of their, of their the family brand and, and of the Glenfiddich brand, which, which Matt's wearing a hat of tonight, and the, um, and, and the Balvenie brand and Monkey Shoulder and Elsa Bay and all those kind of things, and Grant's, of course. So now they have got a structure in place at William Grant and Sons, which they're happy to explain, which is where all of their spirit is used. And so they don't, they don't actually have a capacity to sell to other uh, independent bottlers. So what the, you know, Glenfiddich, Balvenie, et cetera, Caninvi, Elsa Bay, all that kind of stuff. And then some of that gets filtered into monkey shoulder. Some of it gets filtered down to grants. So they managed to find a way to either blend or package up all their own single malts. And they're not getting burned by, cheap European bottlers that are, are poorly packaging their spirit. Matt, how are you going tonight? Oh, good. Good. I've had a busy day and I'm just, um, I'm chilling actually. And I, uh, as you know, I got my, my package this afternoon. The familiar poly, poly pack that I know. Yes, I know those packs. What'd you get? What'd you get? Pirate ship in a storm. 
Harry Shipman on that one. Uh, sold out very quickly. That was Malt of the Month from... Malt of the Month from this month, from the April outturn. There it is. Now, 44.116 uh, vanished very quickly, understandably being a sherried 44 at that price. It was good. That's why I bought two of them. <laughs> you got two. Yep. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> uh, uh, Greg asks, is it true that Scorpios have better taste in whiskey than everyone else? Greg, that is also correct. <laughs> I'm an Aries, so. Uh, well. <laughs> I'll open this, shall I? Oh, you're opening it live. Yeah, cool. Do it. Do it. Do it. I've got two. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you can crack one. You've got If you've got one, you've got two. Oh, here we go. Now, I have no idea what this is like. It's a big whiskey, I can tell you that. That, that smells meaty. It smells like a steak. <laughs> wow. Better pop a cork in that. Oh. Have, you, have you got a glass? Oh, yeah. You sorted? Yeah, wow. So just a reminder to everyone watching at home, what he's just cracked open was this month's Malt of the Month, 44.116, uh, a raw beast. A, actually, it was called Pirate Ship in a Storm. Uh, an eight-year-old second fill Oloroso uh, and bottled at natural car strength of 68.2%. So uh, no no small whiskey, that one. No. Um, <laughs> How are you holding up? <laughs> that's really, that. Uh, considering Craig Ellick is such a, a bit of a dirty mistress, um, it it actually is very clean on the front, very clean. It's, it's, a, it's a very sort of, um, oh, geez. That, that gets your taste buds really, really going. But no, it's very bloody in, in, in nature. Very, very sort of got that, that red meat element. Uh, Mark Teague asked what was just cracked. 44.116, a pirate ship in a storm was just cracked. And I'm, I'm, I'm on the other end of the spectrum. I'm on a, I'm on a light and delicate 80.10 here. <laughs> um, uh, any sulfur, Mark Teague asks. Is there any sulfur? Um, that typical sort of Craig Ellicke sulfur, I think, um, it's not in the forefront. It's all in the back. It's not. It hasn't tainted the spirit nose sulfur. or anything like that. Yeah, spirit sulfur that you get out of that yeah. distillery. Yeah. It's a flavour. It's it's a flavour profile. It's not the nose. It's not a stanky nose. I mean, I've got a. I'm actually got a Glen Livid Nadura mm. opened up at the moment. And that's first fill Oloroso. And that's like. It's, it, that's all in the front sort of thing. Like the, their profile is very different to Glen Livid over, over. Oh, they're wildly yeah. different distilleries. Yeah, yeah. Wildly different. Yeah. Um, just remember for everyone who's just tuned in, it's Friday night drinks with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. I've got my friend and sometimes collaborator, Matt Wooler joining us, who uh, also runs Gram Nation on his end mm -hmm. and has featured uh, society casks a number of times at his events. Uh, and they've been, they've been a lot of fun. Um, and Joey says that the dog behind you wants to join in the chat as well. So, uh, which one, Pepper or Tennessee? Which one do you want? It? Tennessee. <laughs> Tennessee. Come on, Pepper. All right, there's Pepper. <laughs> there we go. Come here. Come here, Tennessee. Come on, some, Pepper, come whiskey box. Here he comes. Two border collies. And the <laughs> use of encouraging them to get down, and then you'd say, get up, get up. <laughs> um, uh, so a, a comment here from Mark Garraway, who we both know. He mm. said, uh, my first whiskey tasting ever was hosted by Matt Wooler at the Castle Hill Bolo. Yes. It was an Isla tasting with the final dram being an Octomore. Yes. Can still remember the room smelling with smoke when Matt told us to take the glass caps off the tasting glasses. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was an Octomore 7.1. That was. Yeah, there you go. Good whiskey. Mm -hmm. That was a few um, years ago. Doggos. <laughs> More dogs. <laughs> All the dog comments coming in. Look at this. There's two of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, cool, cool, cool. Let me just see. Uh, any, uh, let's just see if any comments coming in across the uh, across the divide. Oh, you're opening it live. Oh, sorry. I'm getting feedback dog. here. Sorry. <laughs> oh, 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 just fixed that. Okay. All good. Fixed. Um, yeah, cool. Um, you know what? I think I need my second dram, and mm. I've already picked that out. I'm sticking to the sweet, fruity, and mellow kind of profile for now. And I'm going to go back to Tart Fruit Crumble that I opened a, a couple of weeks ago. It's a, it's a single cask from 112, the 10-year-old from a toasted 
uh, heavy toast barrel. Hmm. So how are you going in this uh, in this isolation times and all that? Give us a rundown. Me? Yeah. Working every day. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm used to working from home. I've worked from home for myself for the last 20 years, so it's not much of a difference. But uh, with the uni work that I do as well, uh, it's all online, and so it's just it's just work, work, work. Now I don't know. It's it, it's fine. I think the uh, we've got the neighbours just down the road have uh, evening sessions out the front. They sit outside with their lawn chairs and talk to each other over the uh, over their yards, and the kids run around doing crazy stuff. So it's yeah. you know, out west. It's pretty. You know, people get pretty lively in their front yards. Uh, a quick question from Rob Akers. Uh, what's your suggested style of beer to boiler maker with a big swirl? Uh, I'd actually, I'd actually do have a bottle of big swirl open here. Uh, if that was a 10 year old blended sherry malt. Um, well, I know you've tried this actually, but you, you might not recall, but it was a while ago, but it was, um, you always say, oh, I don't remember trying that. No, I always say, yeah, yeah, yeah you did. Far away. No, no, I did. Yeah. I did. It was a splendid from a selection of sherry casks. It was a very fun, uh, Easy drinking, good blended malt, sherry blended malt. Uh, I would say uh, either a very light IPA style kind of beer for me, like a like a throwback IPA or something, but nothing nothing too big. Something with a bit of hops might go well with that. I'd say I always like a bit of hops and a bit of sherry. They can always complement each other a little bit there. Any any ideas what beer you might go with, Willa? Oh, with that, yeah, a little bit harder for me to remember what it tasted like overall. Like I remember it was pretty rich. Uh, and she, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is, um, uh, I, I can remember it being pretty rich, but, uh, it was, it was pretty evenly paced. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't, when it comes to, I find it harder. I find it easier to pair, pair, uh, beers with, uh, um, peated whiskeys than I do with, uh, non-peated whiskeys. Mm. Like the peated whiskeys seem to lend themselves a little bit more to, um, to different characters, especially hoppy, hoppy style, um, hoppy style whiskies. I don't know. I've got this. I don't have what you all got open at the moment, but I've certainly got this hop sauce. We've got a call coming in. Yeah, take it. Okay, uh, hold on. Let me bring him in. You're you're live with Matt Bailey and Matt Wooler. Who's speaking? It's uh, Mark Garraway. How are you going, Matt? Ah, oh, it's Mark Garraway. Hey, he's calling in live. You're live on air. How exciting. <laughs> Good to hear um, from you, mate. Yeah. How, are you, how are you going? Not too bad, man. Not too bad. Um, I thought whilst you were talking about Big Swirl, mm. um, I'd just give you a call and maybe ask a question about the heresy bottles that have been uh, appearing reasonably frequently as of late. Yeah. Um, just wanted to know, are they going to be an increasing part of what the society does in the future? Is there going to be, like I think we've had maybe at least three or four this year, is there mm. going to be more going forward? Uh, short answer is no. Um they sort of go in waves a lot like, I mean, I'm hoping that we always have some heresy um, releases always available. I'm hoping there's something always on the website. So if you run out of beachcomber, you can log back in in a month and grab another beachcomber kind of thing. Um, yeah. I'm hoping that there's all, we've always got some, but generally speaking, there's not too many more in the canon for the rest of this year. Uh, there's one, there's one more, which is scheduled sort of like uh, June, July, but it's a very small allocation. And I don't know if we're getting too much of that. We'll have to see. And then there's one later on in the year, which is currently as a work in progress. It's not been bottled up yet, uh, which is a very, uh, actually probably the most experimental of them all so far. Uh, and I don't think any other whiskey company of any description has ever done anything like this. Uh, and we'll see how well that's received. Uh, I think the the working title for it, which sounds a bit like a CIA code name is like BlackRock or something. Um, so they're, they're experimenting with a few things there. I can't, uh, I can't do that. Bamor did that. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's that's actually yeah. You're, you're right. Bamor did use that word, Black Rock. But like, I I, that's why we're not going to call it that. But it's got like that's the, the working title, the code name for it, given what what it is. Uh, and I'll let you uh, speculate uh, on that one. But I can't say any more than that. But it, it's it's very much it's very exciting because it's a it's it's just this. It's basically as I said before, you and Campbell, the the chief whiskey creator, the head of whiskey, the spirits director for the um, society. This is his sandbox kind of stuff. This is his sandpit kind of experimentation. It's a chance for him to play around with some casks uh, and do things which are a bit unusual and a bit of, and also just approachable. Sometimes experimental, sometimes a bit different. I, I also just stress like the heresies are 
if you if you include heresies, rum, cognac, armagnac, bourbon, rye, and gin, that's seven percent, I think, at the moment of the society. So ninety three percent of what we do is single cask still, single cask, single malts. Yeah, not. So it, yeah, it's, um, it's bits and bobs on the side, but it's not it's not really the it's not a, it's not the bread and butter. It's just experimental batches of things that uh, are interesting and affordable and fun. My um, my bottle arrived yesterday at the X World. Yep. And um, I had a few X Worlds last night, and I <laughs> I had a bit few X Worlds. I like I like that it's it's been I, I tapped a bit of a vein of creativity and uh, uh, ended up putting together a, a design for the uh, the Easter logo competition. So I was just wondering where we submit our designs for that um, competition. Uh, do we email them to you, or no, what no, do we do? Right. If if you're brave enough, I mean, you can email it to me, and you can submit it anonymously if you want, or you can private message it to me on Facebook or whatever. Um, but if you're feeling brave enough, post it into the group or tag us on Instagram. That's all it is. So post it in the yeah, Scotch okay. Whiskey Society group, which of which people, which of which you're watching from, uh, and um, and join in for, and 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 submit it onto that thread or submit it as a solo post. Done. All right. I think I'm onto a winner, so I might do that. And we've got about we've got about seven or eight submissions so far. Uh, <laughs> four of which was for, were from one person with four designs. So some of this, we've, got some, we've got some keen entries at the moment. And that was you too. <laughs> that wasn't me. You saw mine. Mine was terrible. Mine was atrocious. <laughs> I can't draw. <laughs> Mark, I'm looking forward to your submission. That'd be a lot of that'd be a lot of fun. I want to see what you've drawn. No worries, guys. I'll let you get on with it. Thanks yeah. for taking my call. Have a have a great Friday. Have a great weekend, Mark. I'll see you soon. I've got a quick question. Too, I've got a quick question. Has um and based on what Mark was sort of just talking about then, um has this whole viral thing slowed down production or releases or anything like that for society at the moment or the blending? Of, it's of- too early to tell. Not at the moment. No, no. I mean, cause we're still drawing upon our own stocks. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, most of the, actually not most, all the society staff are all uh, either working from home or furloughed at the moment. So none of the venue staff are working. Obviously all the, the, the bar staff and venue staff are all, uh, furloughed at, at the moment, but uh, all the um, the uh, management at the society are still working, but working from home, which is presenting its own set of challenges, especially for panel at the moment, because they're having to send out samples uh, of panel uh, panel samples to people's houses instead of all getting together and doing a panel session. Oh, poor them. Oh, oh that's a hard life. There you go. <laughs> uh, oh, another 20 samples to try this week. Oh, another 20. Oh. Uh, uh, Jonathan Walzak asked, and we forgot to get to this one. Jonathan Walzak asks, what beer are you drinking, Wooler? Uh, I've tried to say twice, and you guys just talk over me. Um, hop sauce pale ale. Ah, hop sauce. Yes, yes, yes. Great stuff. So um, it's very hoppy. Uh, it actually goes pretty well with the Craigality, too. It's pretty good. Yeah, right. Okay. I should stop saying the name of the distillery. It goes oh, really well with the distillery 44. Yeah, cool. 44. It goes really well for 44. Point one one six. <laughs> no, it does actually. It it does um, pair quite good. It it tends to retain all its characteristics. Its oiliness. Yep. Yeah, I could easily drink those two together. There's a there's a que- uh, two questions here from Greg Donovan. Uh, he writes: Has there ever been an SMWS uh, release called "Who Let the Dogs Out"? You know what? <laughs> there may have been. I actually don't know. I have to look that up. Uh, and. <laughs> Uh, second of all, a big shout out to Jay Davis, Olive Maruda, Emily Jane, Zach Stanley, May Lawrence. Greg Dolan asks in a second question and says, who's tougher, Jabba the Hutt or Boba Fett? Oh, oh well, I think, oh, Boba Fett. But yeah, for sure. You know, it's like Jabba the Hutt, he's, what, you can get round the back of him and just poke him with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he got choked to death with his own chain. Come on. Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> very cool. Very cool. IPA is says Rob Akers. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that was a great question coming in just then from um from Mark Garraway. So fantastic. Um, now I've actually got a text question that's come through. Um, so any um, just a reminder that you are tuned in live to Friday night Q and A drinks with the Scotchmore Whiskey Society, the world's biggest whiskey club, and we're um we're taking your live questions tonight via phone, via message, by whatever you want to send us. I think it's all hooked up. If I miss it, just try the other one of the other ones. But just, um, yeah, I mean, we're taking live questions and you've got two people who work in whiskey 
sitting in this room right now. So have a chat with us. It's Matt Wooler from Dram Nation and myself. Um, sitting in two different rooms. Sitting in two different rooms, mind you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, yeah, and it's it's uh, it's going swimmingly. So again, you can call up 0448 944 750. It's at the top of the thread. Uh, sh- shoot a call through. That first call was a, a little bit odd, but we got through it. And then the uh, second call was... Um, was great. Was Rob Akers third call there from Mark Garraway. Ah, Emily Kaysen, good to see you. Justine Milsom, good to see you. Okay, uh, a, a text question from Joel. He writes. He said, "Would love to be. Would have loved to be in the stream tonight, but unfortunately, plans get in the way." Uh, a, a, here's a scenario that he wants us to entertain. Now, this actually scenario came from Whiskey Waffle. There's guys in Tassie who do whiskey reviews. Great guys, by the way. So, a big shout out to you guys. Um, it's a whiskey. Would you rather? Uh, scenario. So you've got six hundred dollars to spend on whiskey. Do you buy one awesome bottle, a proper unicorn? Do you get two three hundred dollar bottles? So great whiskies that will scratch every whiskey itch, but don't hold much, too much wow factor. Or do you get four hundred and fifty dollar bottles, uh, good whiskies that will be good to drink during the week, everyday whiskies that are definitely there to be drunk when you want them. This means you have a variety to choose from as well. Uh, interesting in the thought process. And, um, and it'll be different for certain people, but I'll, I'll, I'll go after everyone else on this one. Well, what do you reckon? What's your pick? Oh, you want me? My pick? Well, even even talking about like $150 bottles as everyday drinkers, that's, um, to me, that's a pretty high price range to even be classifying there. Uh, like I, would, I wouldn't be uh, doing everyday drinkers at that price because simply um, I think I'll get divorced pretty quick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, even if you were to say, well, I mean, what do you want me to say? $150, what was this? $149. Come on, I would rather take four of these any day over a, a, a $600 bottle, for sure. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. We're just assuming this is like $600 to be, uh, to be spent in like, you have to spend it on whiskey. So would you go for like four? Yeah, I would. yeah okay, I would. cool. And you're saying you're saying uh, proper unicorns. I mean, come on. Uh, one of five. This one's one of five hundred and sixty-seven worldwide. What do you want? What do you want me to say? <laughs> like, if we talk about proper unicorns from brands, we're talking about fifty thousand bottles per. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Okay. Well, I think my answer on that one would be. Um, uh, I've got a lot of whiskey. Uh, I don't. Uh, we both do, uh, you know, it's, it's, we don't really, I don't really need, uh, I think for me in this case, I would go, for, I'd personally, in this intersection where I'm at right now, I'd go for two, $300 bottles, something I'd just, I'd pick maybe two, if I had to spend 600, I'd pick, or if I can break the rules a little bit and go one, 300 and two, one fifties. Cause I just, I just like something that is, I, mm-hmm. I, I find there with the, some whiskey, depending on what you're getting, but there is, there is often that law of diminishing returns. And obviously certain uh, whiskeys command much higher prices than others. And I can fully respect that. Uh, and that's why a, a 30 year old Brora is, is a lot more than a 30 year old uh, Glenlivet or whatever. We're talking differences between closed distilleries and peated uh, aged peated whiskey takes up a lot, commands a lot higher prices than a non peated whiskey. Um, there you go. Uh, one of the an answer from Mark Teague on that one is he, he'd take a, he'd take four uh, value SMWS bottlings. Yeah, just like you said, you take four mm-hmm. pirate ships in a storm. Yeah, yeah. get that. Yeah, I mean, I, even- I've I've tasted enough ridiculously expensive whiskey to know that uh, marketing has more to do with the price of the of the value of the whiskey than whether it's worthwhile drinking or not. Mm. And I have consistently found that the more expensive the whiskey, the less chance I'm actually just going to be satisfied with even the taste. We'll get another special guest joining the Zoom uh, because you said his name. He, he suddenly gets summoned. So I'll see how he goes here. Uh, uh, welcome to... <laughs> oh, there's Joey. Okay. Uh, welcome to uh, Scott <laughs> Woods Diamonds. Um, we're live with the SMWS at the moment. No trouble now. They're just connecting <laughs> their audio up here. <laughs> Uh, Scotty, you connected. Hello, listeners. <laughs> You're live with SMWS. Good to see you. Mate, I just put the house on those lottery numbers. <laughs> I'm glad if someone I did. I am not rich, 
famous <laughs> in love by this time next week. You're in a bit of trouble and you'll be hearing from <laughs> me. <laughs> Happy Friday night drinks to you both. Yeah, you too. Also, what sort of schmuck picks up a private number? It was the first call. Wait, was it you? Did, was that your call? I was like, everyone in the comments knew apart from you. <laughs> How are you, Willa? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a while, obviously. In fact, the last, I think the last uh, expensive bottle I actually purchased was from the Oak Barrel uh, late la mid last year, which was my, um, which was my Armagnac. Remember yeah, that? Yeah. That was a very, very good Armagnac. Very, very rich. What was that? 40 years old? 39.11 years old. It was uh, delicious. Mm. It was really, really Armagnac. good. Armagnac's excellent. Mm. I like your disco, by the way. Oh, that's my, yeah, that's some of my lights. It's listening to the sound and it lights up as, as the talk. So, yeah. See, I've got that as well, but I, I just turned it off. <laughs> because what happens is on my table on Zoom, you look like you're at a disco that's all right it's party party here <laughs> I, I, my housemate has actually ordered off um somewhere like one of those revolving <laughs> disco ball light things that you like saw from the mid 90s at you know preschool parties the, just, just the mid 90s not not the 70s <laughs> it's, you're too young for that <laughs> yeah only only <laughs> Only an actual age. <laughs> <laughs> you know Scotty's an old soul. Come on. <laughs> Liver shot. <laughs> um, can I do a quick shout out to you? Um, the Oak Barrel Friday night drinks that I've just jumped out of. And I, and I hope yeah. it's still running. Um, they're, I think, now tuning into to this one to say good day as well. Oh, fantastic. Hello, everyone who's tuning in. There you go. Um, Tim Mayer's joining. Uh, Greg Donovan says, hey, Scotty, have you sold my itros yet? <laughs> One left. Yes, no, I did so on the other day. There you go. You want, he, yeah, invoice me. <laughs> <laughs> this is now just a business call. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, what are you drowning on, Scotty? What do you got? You got a Pinot, haven't you? Of course you do. I uh, know. Actually, we're, actually we're, we're trying something new. Um, just a new wine that came in. A very easy, smashable Grenache. Um, what, do you, what do you want me to drink, though? Whiskey, mate. Whiskey. Whiskey. But like, do you want a society whiskey or do you want to? You, you go. With, you go. What you like. You go. What you like. You've still got a bit of that malt like left, haven't you? I do. It's excellent. Excellent hand sanitizer. Just the right strength. Really. It is up there. Well, sixty percent, wasn't it, on the dot? Sixty on the dot. Yeah. Look, I think I'm up to beach coma. I have a uh, the garden shed of England here. Oh, you got. Oh, you do too. There's not, there shouldn't be much left in that bottle. Oh, no, there isn't, but I need a fresh glass. In fact, that pirate ship in a storm, I've let that get all this air and it's starting to show uh, aspects on, uh, in, in the taste of like a uh, raspberry. Yeah, right. I've only got one glass. So I'm just going to finish the wine before I can pour some whiskey in there. Yeah, you own one glass. Yes, but the other ones are further away. Oh, okay, cool. Um, uh, when, are you, when are you studying the Scotch um, single cask wine society? Mm. <laughs> you know that wine and whiskey should be further apart, not closer together. <laughs> Mate, I know there's like 500. We don't revoke years. any sherry barrel aged things from whiskey if that, if that sort I, of yeah, I think talk so. keeps up. Yeah. Wine, wine might hold the uh, sherry barrel. <laughs> Shit, the party's all right there, mate. <laughs> Dogs, family, you know. Uh, Greg Donovan says, thank God I can't sell any bloody tickets at the moment. So uh, that's great. Um, and Dan Wool is watching. Good to see you, Dan. Dan Mathers is also watching. Good to see you, Dan. Fantastic. There are some exciting things coming from those parts of the world. There are. Uh, Byron. And, and, and Greg, uh, happy Australian band t-shirt day as well, which is a big thing for... Uh, the Australian music industry in some very trying times, but I sort of just had a lot of things of the industry getting around. Um, and Highwaymen coming up soon, I believe. Byron Bay whiskey. Mm. Do you get a free vaccine every time you buy a whiskey from Byron Bay? Or are they against that? <laughs> <laughs> Honest question. No, I don't. <laughs> um, 
For those who've just tuned in, it's it's Friday Night Drinks with the Scotchman Whiskey Society here, and I have some special guests. I have Matt Wooler on my left and uh, Scott Fitzsimons just here uh, with half of Joey as well. Uh, good, good, good to get half, half of Joey in the frame there. Always, always, always a pleasure. I can actually change. You, you have to pay extra for the full full. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Times are tough, all right? Yeah. <laughs> so I actually might have a. Can you just post our OnlyFans <laughs> link here, please? <laughs> I might have a question for um actually for you, Scott, as a, as an oak barrel um as an oak barrel question. How what's what's changing for you guys? What's what's good? What's bad? How, how's business for you guys? Yeah. Look, um, we're. Cautiously optimistic at the moment. Um, it, it was funny. We sort of on on the when the, the lockouts first came in on that sort of it was announced on a Sunday. Monday was basically pack up your bar and your restaurant, get rid of all your perishables, and go home. You know, the chain stores around the country had one of the biggest days ever, like the biggest Monday ever. We had one of our quietest Mondays ever. Right. And to be honest, those those two weeks immediately after that were were quite tough. You know, we're in the middle of the CBD and foot traffic is, well, you know, was, was key and, you know, workers basically. Um, because, and as you know, Matt, we've been doing a little bit of like the online stuff and, um, you know, tastings are a big part of our business. So we were able to pivot quite quickly to online tastings and sort of, you know, you know, direct market to people on emails and be very, you know, maybe we've got a database of XYZ thousand, but maybe you send certain things to only 30 people and just more of that because there's no customers to serve, so you've got a bit more time to sit in front of a computer. So we're, we're cautiously optimistic. Yeah. Like, in completely honestly, I'm not going to give out figures, but the online is is rising. It's not up to the spot where the foot traffic has dropped off. It's not completely finished that, but, you know, we're here, which is what I can't say for many of our friends in, in hospitality. Mm. Um, and I, I kind of I like the, the challenge, you know, like whether it's on a, a footy field or in, in business, I like that. Okay. Yeah. We, we've, we've got the opportunity to fight. If, if we don't get through this, it's kind of our fault. Um, mm. But yes, we are the most expensive pick and pack warehouse in the country at the moment. Yeah. We've got a warehouse in the middle of Sydney CBD. <laughs> yeah, it's strange times. For those who, uh, many of you who's already tuned in will know, this is um, Scott and Joey from the Oak Barrel in Sydney, who have been a fantastic supporter of the society throughout the years, both at Champs and both in tasting formats and everything like that. I'm going to grab a question coming in from Dan, but in the meantime, I have, whilst he's typing that, uh, Xander Collier asks, um, uh, do you know if any distilleries have closed up shop for a while? You might be talking Scottish, you might be talking Australian, but in whatever context, do you know of any distilleries that have closed up whilst this is happening and not, are not producing hand sanitizer? Um, I don't know who this is directed at, but yeah, a lot. Um, one of the big, one of the big things at the moment happening in, in Scotland. I mean, Australia's a little bit different. Hand sanitizer we've pivoted quite quickly to hand sanitizer. A lot of people, um, you know, for a lot of distilleries. But in um, Scotland, the issue is the bottling plants because not a lot of distilleries have their own bottling on site, um, and so everything's shut down. And I, and please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know the legislation there particularly well, but I think um, their furlough scheme to get you know payments for letting stuff go is involved around shutting down. So. You know, a lot of places have shut down with the anticipation they're going to get this money, which means bottling plants aren't working. I know places like Kilhoman, where their bottling plants on site, they're, they're still good. But independent bottlers, I've spoken to, actually spoke to a few people today about, um, you know, the next six months and what we're going to see here. I was like, well, no one's bottling anything. You know, they're either putting it into just tank to sleep and wait, but there's, there's nothing happening. So, um, yeah, I think... We were having a bit of a, a joke today in that sort of black humour is, um, you know, when you, you get someone come into the store and be like, oh, I'm really after a, you know, a birth year bottling of scotch. I'm like, oh, great. Yeah. What year were you born? 1983. You go, oh, shit, mate. Jesus Christ. Any kid, <laughs> that's a hard year for whiskey. <laughs> yeah. Any kid that's born in 2020 and in 18 or, you know, 21 years goes, I'm looking for a 2020 scotch whiskey to mark my birth. You're like, oh, mate, you're in real trouble here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think people looking for twenty twenty distilled dates might be, uh, yeah, might be in the same sort of trouble as eighty three. Then I, um, uh, Dan Willie asks, are you are you doing shoeys at home now that the bars are closed? <laughs> there, is, there is photo evidence of me doing a shoey at some point, I think, and I might actually be wearing. 
Yeah, uh, no, you, I, I have seen you shoey out of that very boot. That's true. <laughs> it's good. Now. <laughs> Please. Uh, the, uh, the SMWS promote um, responsible drinking. Anyway. Um, and this isn't even my stream. We can go wild. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I've got the boot button. Ho I'm hovering over the boot button on your screen. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> and uh, Dan Woolley says, Isla is mostly shut down. Okay. I didn't know that. Uh, I, like, I think a lot. Mm. A, a shot. I know, like, and even like Springbank, who do everything on site. I mean, their their capacity, they hit maybe ten or fifteen percent of their capacity in a, in a good year, anyway. Um, but they've just you know pivoted straight to hand sanitizer and and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and I actually saw a, there was a good question in one of the Facebook groups today, just a, about that, and people sort of saying, how do you like how many distilleries, like in particular, like single malt style distilleries around the world. How many, like, what are the, you know, capabilities of distilling spirit to that, you know, 90 plus level? Um, but I know that in Australia, and I'm sure you, you guys have been watching this as well, it's it's about getting that bulk ethanol in and then turning that into hand sanitizer. Mm. Um, and not necessarily about distilling the stuff yourself, but having the, you know, the, the infrastructure to work with 95% spirit into something that can, that can work. Um, and uh, can I ask you? Always a question. What hand sanitizers are you using at the moment? What 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 type brand? What, what brand? Yeah, you got the sheep's way. Uh, no, <laughs> I think I got death hole and a few other things that we've had hanging around the house. Which one have you got there? Rick, Rick, oh, yeah. Touch left of the carrot. You're probably oh, yeah, sitting yeah. there for a little while because there's like a dribble left and the, the thing doesn't pick it up. And I don't want to, obviously, just like a single malt, you don't want to blend hand sanitizers together, right? That just oh, yeah. really, <laughs> um, so, this, this one's just for looking at it at the moment, but there's about that much left in the brick, so we're still good. Yeah, no, I, I started off with an Archie Rose um, sanitizer, and I poured the Archie Rose sanitizer into this Aquium sanitizer bottle, which was empty, uh, because it has a pump on it. And all these, they're all selling all these without a pump. Uh, they just, you know, like, just okay. a free, free, free flow bottle. And so it's like you... Yeah you, yeah, you drink it. Yeah, exactly. No, but like this is, a, you know, uh, no, I haven't got through all the Archie yet, Rob. It was just sort of like I've poured most of it into this um, into this container so that I can access it rather than accidentally pouring 200 mils into your hands. So um, that's that's answering that one. Uh, Zeno asks on the chat thread, he asks, did we talk about pens and glassware yet? Um, mm, interesting. Um, I've still got the same terrible hotel pen. I don't have quite the uh, the Waterford pens that uh, Murray was showing off last night. What are, what's going on over here, guys? What's your pen there situation? Uh, so, so I just got me got me pen box out. Um, and if I'm going to put the pen other box, pen. just just put that into perspective for a moment. You just said pen box. Yeah. So and actually, <laughs> this, yeah, okay. you win, Waller. <laughs> this, this this is okay. I'm, I'm going to make a point here and, and correlate pens to to whiskey. Whiskey is all about what's inside the bottle, right? The the glassware, the box it comes in, they can be big and flashy and expensive and all that sort of thing. But it doesn't really mean anything. It's all about what's inside. That's right. And it's all about the outside. As long as your ink is half decent, and I'm running a quink through this, a quill ink from um, Parker for, for this one, but it's all about the outside. If, if you want to be like hold something with a bit of weight and looks beautiful, get into pens because you just keep refilling them. So I don't know if you, if you can see that, but there is that some is, real... That is a nice pen. That is a nice so, pen. So this is a Parker. It was a bit of a limited edition called Expedition Series. It was a real wanky um, series. And it's actually, I wish, I don't know if you can see that. I wish this was clear silver. It's actually got stupid, you know, fake passports on it, which makes it a little bit stupid. But it's a gold nib, which means it's got a lot of give in it. It's very soft. Um, which is why you use a fountain pen, right? Because it flows ink at a different as your hand moves. Um, it's actually covered in um, gold, covered in rhodium, um, because rhodium doesn't rust. Um, if anyone knows, rhodium is the uh, reasonably expensive. Um, <laughs> I thought you said rhodium. Uh, it's a rhodium. Hold on a second. I will just kill you. <laughs> I will just say, Scotty. Actually, I before the lockdown, I found myself in QVB, and I um and on the top floor there, there was a there's a pen shop. And I'm sure you know the one. 
Yep. And, I, I, I can't afford to shop there there. I get it. No, no, no. I can't afford to shop there either, but I thought I'd do that thing where I look like I'm browsing. You know, it's like, it's, it's one of those kind of shops and they know, they know. They, they, they saw me in my t-shirt. They smelled and you before you walked oh, in. Mate, I, <laughs> I probably smelled a bit like whiskey and I was wearing a t-shirt and shorts and I was definitely not their target market. But I, um, I, I walked in and there was, um, and there was, I saw this Lammy pen uh, that was, it was spring loaded. So the pen itself was like that, that tall, but when you pressed it, it sort of turned into a full size pen and then you pressed it back down again. It went in your pocket. I, I, I still regret not buying that because it was only like $60 or something. I thought, well, I'm not going to spend $60 on a pen, but at the same time, I really should have. Yeah, you definitely should have. I know, I know, I know. Because they last forever. What are you yeah. going to hold on to all your empty bottles of whiskey? No, you throw them out. You collect those memories, but you collect pens because they're always going to last forever. Lam- Lammy's great, but they're just a bit modern for me. Like, it, like I, get it, I get it. Excellent. Yeah. They are modern. Uh, they are modern. And, Matt, and you, should have, um, you should have just saved some of that money out of that six hundred dollars you got to opt on some whiskeys and allocate <laughs> some money for a pen. There you go. <laughs> uh, does it have a custom ink, Scotty, from Rob Acres? Uh, that one, no. That I'm just using Quink for that one. So Quill Ink, which is the Parker, and I just use a refill for, yep. for that particular one. So you just it's it's a you know little ink jar and you you pull it up. Um, the other one, my Otto Hut from Germany, I'm using uh, custom ink. But I I got, and I want a a big shout out to Chez Catrack, who um, has come to a lot of our whiskey tastings and a lot of our online tastings. Um, He's got me onto my next ink purchase when things open up again. Apparently, there's there's a a really good um, ink made out of out of Australia. He's using like Australian pigments and yeah, right. And I've got the I forget the name, but it's written down somewhere. It's in my email. Single cask is a single cask pigments. It's it's single plot ink. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. So it's like it was. It was formed from one plot of land, like like one backyard, essentially. <laughs> I, I don't know how long this joke can go on. It's not, but but if it was me and Joey by ourselves, it was a laugh for about 15 seconds. But I'm trying to keep a straight face and just go all the way through here because it's not my stream and I don't care. <laughs> if you keep letting me do it, I will keep doing it. <laughs> Uh, so it's a small batch good yeah small batch good oh, incredibly small batch yeah that's what rob says he says it's a small batch i'm, I'm open to calling it that that's good uh, look I'm, I'm it's not even a joke but of course you've seen most of my pens are cheap um, are stolen, stolen from hotel rooms when traveling and so this is a a, a grace hotel and there you go i don't know where it came from. it came from the grace hotel i know where it came from but uh, uh, anyway I I don't have any nice pens because I lose them. Same with AirPods. Don't buy AirPods. I gave you 600 pens. What have you done with those yet? I I lost them all. They all all got used once and then thrown somewhere. (laughs) You did actually give me 600 pens. That was funny. (laughs) It did. (laughs) I I don't know where that came from. Um, Let's see if any comments coming in from the stream here. I think most people are just laughing at how ridiculous this is, so that's okay. Fair enough. (laughs) Uh, cool. Well, thanks, guys. <laughs> this not bad. Are you on the Motlack? Yeah, yeah, I'm on the pe- I'm on the the beach coma. Yeah. How is how is that actually? Very Campbelltowny. I like that. I like that in a whiskey though, as you would as well. It's it's a mixture of Campbelltown and Highland malts. Um, fifty percent ABV, seven years old, young, but first all first fill bourbon barrels. So because of the name, clearly it must have a uh, certain. Uh beachy element to it a little bit more medicinal does it what's it got it, the inspiration is off the oily and coastal profile okay so that, that's oh. sort of like quite it, it is quite oily it's quite coastal it's yeah. quite like uh i said before when i was i re- re- reviewed this on wednesday night and it's like the nose is campbelltown and the finish is highland so it's it's got like a like a glen scotia nose and a bell blair finish kind of thing I'm not saying either of the distilleries in it in it but I was, I was just i was just about to ask what sort of campbelltown are you talking about on that nose uh, I am talking Scotia kind of nose, yeah, yeah, which I like. I like because I mean I, I've said before that Glen Scotia is the uh, unsung hero of uh, of Campbelltown at the moment. If I'm being honest, it's you can get it. It's affordable. It's fun. It's great whiskey. Uh, it's unlike you know you've seen what's happened with like a lot of things like like a lot of Springbank is very hard to get now or you know, outrageously expensive for what it is. And you see you know releases that are twelve or fourteen or fifteen year old casks that are ridiculously priced and it's i think it's the obviously they're not increasing supply but demand is certainly increasing with it 
uh, Glenn Gall is, you know, it's it's very sm- you. I know you, your relationship with Glenn Gall. You love your you love your Kilcarrens. Careful. Careful. No, 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 I'm just saying. But again, very small uh, supply, reasonably high demand. But they seem to be maintain, maintaining a 12 year old age statement, which good on them. Uh, yeah. We don't get any cars from Glenn Gall, but they don't sell to any indies, so that's okay. Have I have I told you the stories, the links I've gone? To get the oak barrel name on a cask of Glen Gyle. Is that not going to happen? No, it's no. <laughs> and I think, you know, we're like, you, you push something in, you know, so far and you work really, really hard and, you know, spend a bit of money on something and show some people some good times. And he was like, this, if this doesn't get me to where I want to be, it's not going to happen. And <laughs> it doesn't. And then you keep pushing and now they're just scared to go out drinking with you. How, how many times did you go to that titty bar? <laughs> See, I didn't know Christchurch that well, so I couldn't find one, unfortunately. So it was a Spanish themed, uh, like, it's, like it's a, it's a restaurant. Oh, he's gone. I think we lost him. I forget. Him. Oh, no, there he is. All good. Yeah. I'm back. Sorry. Yeah, we actually we actually ran out of internet uh, yesterday <laughs> during our marathon live stream, myself and Joey. And oh, I'm yeah. not even kidding. You. And I, I'm like, I've been on the phone to this particular provider, not the phone, but like the messenger, and they cannot give me more data. I was like, guys, I don't care what it costs. Just mm. give me data. Like, oh no, it's too hard. You got to do this. You, you went live data. last night, and it was quite long, wasn't it? Yeah, and that's that's we thought we were good, but we we're like nine days out from the month, and we've run out because live streams this time last year went for an hour. Now they're going for four and a half hours across seven different platforms. How long was the round table we did on, you and I did on Wednesday night? Because that was my second live stream for the day. And I remember it was quite long. Yeah. So I think you and I started at the same time. I started at 6.30 with the bourbon tasting here. And you started at like just after that with your society stream. And we jumped in at 7.40. Yep. At 10 o'clock, I think we wrapped up. Yep. And then the after party went till about midnight. Yeah, that's right. I mean, sure. Yes. That's, that's a lot of data wasted on <laughs> talking a lot of rubbish. Uh, Joey says it's because everyone's watching Netflix, damn it. <laughs> Probably is. Fridays are the worst day for data at the moment here in Australia. The worst but, day. Everything slows down for some reason. Well, no yeah. kidding. I mean, it's, we're doing okay right now. We're, the broadcasting... Yeah, no, I just, I'm, just, I'm running off a phone, so I'm sort of bouncing in and out. The, the upload speed isn't always uh, as good as it... Could and you got a photo of a dog on that phone. You got a photo of the dog, which is good. Dogs are being uh, clean tonight. So, yeah, yeah. This and actually, I think both of you have met this dog. I don't live with this yes. dog anymore, and I want to do a quick shout out to to my dear best friend of that. But yes, yeah, she sent me this photo of Willa, who we used to live with back in mm-hmm. our uh, tram car. Crazy Willa. That, that dog was madness, and uh, it is now a little bit grumpy. It's sort of hitting the teenage, also got past it into the middle age. And if it was trying to take a photo for me, and this is what will like. Well, 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 well. Uh-huh. Are you serious? Grumpy Willa. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That, that, uh, there's yeah. people on the Oak Barrel live stream going, where the hell are you? And I was like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> dogs. Dogs. I'm not impressed with that. But, um, post, post photos of your dogs, everyone. Photos of your dogs. <laughs> dog photos and dog names. No cats. Dogs out for the boys. Dogs out for the boys. Dogs out for the boys. Dogs. You've got the lights. I've got the music. <laughs> Bailey's dance, got the radio. Bailey, dance. <laughs> Do well, it. I mean, I've got some music as well. Yeah, exactly. So we can make it happen. <laughs> we can make it happen. We're going to do dogs. <laughs> dogs out for the boys. Dogs out for the boys. Everybody, dogs out for the boys. Uh, it was such a good idea to say, hey, do you want to just jump in quickly? And here's a link. <laughs> why not? Immediate regret. No, I don't regret it. It's good. It's good. <laughs> it's great. Um, yeah. We're having lots of great comments and lots of great questions coming through, but uh, I think we might just um, start wrapping it up there. Um, thank you, both of you, for jumping in the stream. Friday night drinks, of course. Uh, all the members of the society in the group, page, YouTube, who are watching right now, thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Paul Ruckett, sorry, mate, we're just finishing up. Um, but... Um, <laughs> I've, I've, I've got a Zoom link if anyone wants to join and it's a meeting so everyone has the same powers as us. It's, on Facebook, the, the, it's the Oak Barrel Facebook page. I'm about to, apparently it's still going, the Oak Barrel drink, so I'm about to jump back into them. <laughs> Appreciate it, Scotty. <laughs> Thanks for the plug. 
And I'll, 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 no, just, just quickly, Matt, before you go, um, why does every distillery in Australia think so poorly of the society that they won't sell you any spirit? That was a very strange question the other night, and that's not even remotely true. Well, because uh, I know you've, you've gone to every single distillery, even gin distilleries in Australia, and you've got blank check, please sell me anything. I've just gone, no, I don't, don't want it. Maybe they need to make something worth it while drinking. Oh, <laughs> I did not say that, but I, 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 what I will say is that we have been... It's the bloke with a skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say that we've been talking with Australian distilleries for some time. In fact, when I say some time, <laughs> um, we do have a number of casks maturing at the moment in Australia of, of spirit that we are going to be bottling. Um, well, if they pass panel, uh, it just it, look. It's always it. It's a long story, but it comes down to the fact that you know as well as I do, Scotty and and Matt, that the uh, the industry has taken a seismic shift in the last uh, two years. I can safely say. Uh, actually, I, I'll even go so far to say in the last nine to 12 months, how much oh, yeah. has changed in the local spirit scene. Uh, before that, I mean, there was a, I like to think of Australian whiskey as 1820 to 1992. And then I think of it from 1992 to 2014. And then I think of it from 2014 to 2018. And now I think of it as 2018 late or early 19 to now. I think we've actually entered the next era of that. And what I mean by that is, of course, 92 to 14 is like the, 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 the Cradle Mountain, the Lark, the Sully, the, the, the resurgence of single malt whiskey. And, the, and of course, 2014, the big award by Sullivan's Cove. So, uh, and therefore, oh, look at this, Australian whiskey is a thing. So uh, every Tom, Dick and Harry starts a distillery. A lot of not very good product coming out of that period, and that's fine. There's a lot of finding footing and a lot of sort of, that's okay, that's okay, that's too expensive, that's, that's good, but doesn't doesn't make sense and then i think we've entered a new era with distilleries such as melbourne moonshine gospel archie rose star i would i think we're seeing this the the not just big distilleries but small ones as well finding their footing a bit more now and realizing that quality matters and so the, we don't want to bottle something that members would be unhappy with of course query. around the world query as well um because i've just been silly earlier is cask size a problem though as well like are, are australian distilleries making too little for a single cask but because society now has its blended category could that actually suffice for australian an australian release even if it's a blended but, but look, i wouldn't rule out the idea of doing an australian heresy at one point uh that'd be up to andrew and the and the panel and and, and different a number of different people but it'd be it's it's the fact that uh, cask size does to come to your question cask size does play a huge part in that and it does I mean like, like what's the value in releasing a 50 litre cask so that um, you know 60 members out of 30,000 can get access to something yeah yeah. Kind of, it's, it's difficult yeah, it's like I'd have to I'd have to get a lot of those I'd, exactly so even even 100 litre casks are kind of like oh that's difficult so well, 220s 225s hoggies that's well, where we even the other thing is, it's like, you know, just like we would demand here in Australia, if uh, uh, another, kind, well, a new distillery, it doesn't matter who, releases something, we're like, we want some bottles here. Even if there's only 24 for Australia, we want some bottles. So if there was an Australian release, yes. sure as hell, um, the UK is going to want an allocation. So that... No, but, but, no, but I, I disagree. That should be fine because what is two members in Australia, three in the UK... <laughs> There's, there's five in America. So, I mean, like, Where does the 30, I mean, especially come from for then? those early releases, 10 bottles should be fine. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about Oak Barrel members. Right. Yeah, okay, right, right, right. Yes, yeah, so Oak Barrel have their eight members. We've got our nine members. We're fine. We're fine, right? No, no, no. But... <laughs> oh, no hang on. Oak it's... Barrel is... Oak Barrel I'm going to have to become, if, if we get any more members, I'm going to have to become Tasmanian to grow some extra fingers. So... <laughs> I was going to say, isn't it Oak Barrel? It's ten dollars for a membership for life. How awesome is that? Twenty-five bucks. It's twenty-five bucks. Oh, it's like, ten bucks. We're, we're a premium hey, joint, mate. It's ten percent off. I paid ten a long time ago, and I'm I'm paying uh, what ten dollars a month to society. I, I I didn't pay anything for <laughs> Oak Barrel membership, so I don't know what's going on there. What's how, how that? <laughs> Cancelled. Cancelled. <laughs> I've still got my membership card. Thank you. Uh, these guys. These guys. I tell you what. 
Okay, but to answer your question, yes, it comes down to cask size as well because size uh, does matter to you. It does. It oh, it has to. It, it's size you know, matters. Size <laughs> definitely matters. Size definitely matters, and it, it, it's it's also. And I don't want to open a can of worms here, but it does. It, it's you really don't want to get too excited. There's not too many 20, 20 to fifty liter casks to get excited by, and there's not. And then there's a, there's quite a few hundreds on the market, and yes, uh, the price is starting to make more sense, etc. But um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, this is, independent bottling in Australia is, is quite a formative market, as as we know. There's only what four or five independent bottlers here that do very small outputs, uh, which you know. And so it, it's it's comes down to what requirement is and what we need and what, what could work. But well, that's not it's ultimately not, that's not up to me, but that's up to our. Okay, so question. so the other thing is uh, a lot of Australian distillers are uh, you already have access to their to their cast strength bottlings. You already have access to their limited releases. It's like society's just going to limit by limit. On well, top no, of- but like that's you do have access to them, but at the same time, what we do is obviously quite unique and different to their normal house style as well. What is going on there? I can I can play that game too, Wooler. <laughs> look at those. Look at that keyboard move. <laughs> oh, you're an idiot. <laughs> I just, I, I, I just can't take you seriously with those colours. I was like, I can play that game too. You're just jealous. You always wear black. Come on, you wear black all the time anyway to begin with. Yeah. yeah. Is there a, well, Mike as, does not reflect off black. My favourite colour is grey. Well, it's called a black hole. <laughs> Gosh, it did take, with this computer, it took me, there's a button here that does that. It took a long time for me to actually press that button because I was scared of what it might do. You're just jealous. You're always jealous. <laughs> yeah, right. Sure, That's, sure. When, when have I denied that ever? <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go. I, I love you boys. I'm going yeah, to go I jump back in. and do the Oak Barrel yep. Friday night drinks if anyone wants to come. And this, our drinks aren't um, broadcast anywhere, so things might get a little bit weird. But um, <laughs> that's where I'm going to go now so I can get a bit weird with that's colours. Awesome. And, colors. and if, if, if you think like my, my clothing is black, what isn't black is my very, very, very white fluorescent skin. So maybe that's what's going <laughs> to. I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Hey, barrel membership you. Gets you. Hey, yeah, yes, access to, uh, yeah. <laughs> 25 bucks for Oak Barrel membership, 35 bucks if you want lifetime OnlyFans accounts. I, I paid 10 and barely paid nothing. <laughs> no, no, no. I, yeah. <laughs> I didn't get the OnlyFans link though, did I? All right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, that's, that's the first time <laughs> Bailey's asked for a freebie. Yeah. Oh, this guy. I don't which, know. Which, is, which is completely untrue as well. He always pays for everything, but it was just open for it. He just pays for everything. He's a really nice bloke, but you just teed that up and I had to knock it out of the park. You come, anytime, anytime he comes over, one of the first things he asks for is a coffee. He's just like, are you making coffee? It's like, I'm pretty sure I'm not. I'm at the door, but sure, I'll make yeah. it. Are you making coffee? <laughs> I was like, yeah, because I pay for the coffee beans that I make coffee with. You know, the milk as well. I'll, I'll, I'll put a dollar in the tin next that. time. It's it's your, you're making coffee then, Will. I'll put a dollar in your tin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these guys. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pop him out there. I'm going to pop uh, Scott and Joey out because it looks like they're frozen up anyway. Um, yeah, we're back. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Right. I'll speak to you later. Cheers. Do I have to boot them or what? No, there they are. Okay. I'm still here. Oh. Ah, I'm still here. <laughs> oh, I haven't booted you yet. There you go. Uh, <laughs> I'll behave. I promise. Uh, James Bunton says, nice hat, Matt Wooler. <laughs> On brand. James gave me this hat. Thank yeah, you there, there you go. <laughs> Private stash. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's only Sydney coffee, says Rob Akers. Yeah, yeah, true. You know what? Spoken like a true Melbourneian. Our coffee's better. Uh, you know what? It isn't. Sydney coffee can be great as well. So, well, Melbourne coffee is actually pretty good. So I'll just say yeah, that. Yeah, you've been threatening to move there for ages. So come on. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, I think we'll call it there. Thank you so much, uh, Matt Wooler from Dram Nation for having a chat. And um, Friday night drinks, all very informal. An hour and 15 minutes of just mm. good banter and good fun. Uh, really appreciate it, everyone from Facebook to YouTube to Page to everyone tuning in tonight. It's been really good and uh, we'll catch you all maybe some informal weekend streams. There's something I'm working on downstairs under this office that I'm keen to show you all what's going on there. 
I uh, just got some. Uh, <laughs> I just got some new sandpaper, actually. So there you go, and, and a Dremel. So you know, what? I'll get my gag ball. <laughs> I did not say that. And, um, and I'll see you all. Uh, I'll see. You, I'll see you soon, Waller. And I'll <laughs> and I'll see everyone else. Uh, all in good time. Uh, hopefully, when our events are able to be back online. But in the meantime, quick little plug. It's sold out, I'm afraid. But Monday night is, of course, our gathering live stream with Andrew Durbage. We're going to be hosting it here, and we're going to be everyone's going to be able to tune in, both on Zoom or on our Facebook chat. It's going to be a lot of fun. Even everyone, if you don't get a pack, so even if you don't get a pack, you can chime in. Everyone can chime in. Oh, even if you get a, everyone can chime in on the Facebook group. Uh, but the Zoom link will go to those who got the pack. Uh, and oh, and then um, of course I'll uh, and then. The big week of lives coming up this week coming as well. I will see you all on Monday night for the official gathering live stream. I've got some awesome special guests lined up as well. Tuesday night is Samuel Licardi from McHenry's Distillery. Wednesday night is uh, John McShane from SMWS UK, the global ambassador of the Scotchmore Whiskey Society on Wednesday night is joining us here on the live stream. And then maybe we'll catch up with Waller on Thursday night. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no you cannot greg you <laughs> but you'll be hard pressed to do so anyway uh i'll see you both i'll see you all soon thanks everyone okay bye